Hi, I'm Davis. And I'm Andy. Welcome to another episode of Game Gracers Discuss. How you doing, Andy? I'm okay, Davis. How about you? I see you're the world's greatest farter. That's right. Um, no, I mean, father. That's that's fantastic. You get that for Father's Day. Of course. That's oh, my daughter. Right. She likes me. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so today's question comes from our good diehard fan, Digital Drew 92 Ooh, I love it. I love it. Topically relevant and on time, and he asks us, What are your thoughts on Pokemon Go? I know everyone's crazy about it. But what are your feelings and why? So I've heard all the kids are downloading it to their phones. I have it. Really? I do. How many have you caught? Um, I think so far I'm level three and I've caught like eight. I've turned in two for extra points because they were duplicates. Eight? Yeah. Wait, you can turn them in? Yeah, like you can get uh, candy to help. So like, I think you get candy and you use it to like level up. Same Pokemon. Uh, okay. So like if you've got if you got one that's got a combat power of like 38 and you've got one that's got a combat power of 10 You transfer the one that's got 10 and then you use that to like power up your guy who's 38 I'm still I think I'm on like Pokemon yellow. So, you know, I, uh, I I think sort of like kind of touch on my basis of my history of Pokemon is I I was at their forefront um, when red and blue came out mm -hmm. um, and I've played a few generations here and there um, one, the first generation was the only one I really got into it. I played a bit of the Pokemon uh, card game, which I found going through some boxes. I found my old Pokemon cards. And those are kind of like... Um, magic. Uh, yeah, it's like magic training kind of thing. But, like, I've never been, like, a diehard Pokemon guy. I know, like, people get, like, crazy into it. I'm just, like, playing the games, they're just, like, a bit, it's a bit too grindy mm -hmm. for me these days. Um, but that being said, I went out for a walk during work today... <laughs> For about half an hour and i learned two very important things number one i'm horribly out of shape <laughs> and number two i have no idea how to find pokemon <laughs> and number three i had a blast doing it there you go you need a little hat with a little pokeball on it i want to be the very best <laughs> like no one ever was so so do you think this is the penultimate uh, pokemon because um it's not quite vr but it's augmented reality if Nintendo ever made a virtual reality Pokemon MMO, the world would shut down. And that would... Nintendo would become the largest economy in the world. I think I've heard a lot of Japanese anime uh, series have started out this way. Hmm, like a dot .hack sign. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, Sword Art Online, <laughs> all of those, come on. All those, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, overall my thoughts of it are, I think... It's exciting to finally see Nintendo get into the mobile space. I think it's something they they probably should have done a lot sooner. Well, with Mitimo, what do you think about that? Because that kind of fell off really that fast. Fizzled a little bit. I, f I feel like with Mitomo, uh, it fizzled out because it was more of a social app than a game, mm. and it wasn't like you with Pokemon Go. Like people physically go out, they go hunting, which kind of makes it fun and interesting. And then apparently, I've seen like photos of people who like. They go to Poke Stops, mm -hmm. um, and you meet other people who are clicked in Pokemon, and you just sit around, chat, and you go out looking for Pokemon, and apparently people fight over Pokemon and all sorts <laughs> of stuff. I mean, I went out for my walk today, and I ran into a guy who was in the middle of catching a Parasect. And then I spent like 10 minutes walking on that area trying to find one. Yeah, last night I was out, and I saw a lot of, uh, it was like pairs of guys, and they all had their phones out, <clears> and they were all kind of walking in the same direction. It was kind of funny. I knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah, like I was, I, when I was out there, I saw a couple of people with their phones out kind of looking around waimlessly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, either they're just lost because they're new students at the school or they're playing Pokemon Go <laughs> or both. What do you think this says about the health of the Pokemon series? Considering that Pokemon Go came out and then shortly thereafter, the new Pokemon and the current generation Pokemon became the top selling games on Amazon. I'd say that means a lot for... Yeah, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. And I think mm. I think Pokemon Go in particular is a great franchise for them to branch out into the mobile space because that's so perfectly suited to that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. Something you can just pick up your phone, go do, have some fun, hopefully put down <laughs> um, without... And anyone can do it. Like, you can have parents who don't know crap about Pokemon see their kids doing this. Oh, the kids are out having fun. I should go with them, and they'll start having fun, and maybe they'll get into Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Maybe then when the game comes out later this year, then the parents will join in that. You know, those kind of things. I mm -hmm. think it it's sort of, hopefully, that new 
spot where the Wii was, where they, they courted the non-gamers, and now they have the option of doing that again. And I've heard stories of that actually happening. Mm -hmm. So, we'll see. What about the tail on the game? Because I think they need to do some improvements to keep people's interest up. I think so. I definitely think if they can have frequent periodic updates of new Pokemon, maybe a couple gameplay elements, or maybe they realize that people aren't leveling up fast enough and need to catch some stuff, there are other ways to do that kind of thing. Um, but I think overall, yeah, it definitely is not the most finessed mobile game I've ever played. No. Um, but it's still pretty solid. I'm sure they're just having server issues because it's a new Pokemon thing. It's kind of, that's a natural thing. It happens more often than not that they have early problems. But I mean, the nice thing is usually within a month or two, they've, if they've ironed them out, people forget about that. Yeah, I mean, usually, I mean, I think, I remember, like, playing World of Warcraft when it first came out, and it was a goddamn mess, because <laughs> boats would leave the harbor, and then they would despawn, and you'd fall in the middle of the ocean and die from fatigue, because you couldn't swim, like, short fast enough. <laughs> Sounds like a blast. Whew. So, I think it'll be interesting to see, um, and how they tweak the, uh, you know, getting Pokeballs, obviously, that's kind of a big part of the microtransactions. Um, hopefully, they can Poke continue. Stops, man. You just go to Poke Stops. You get three or well, four. But what happens do, you know where, when, do you know where there's a Poke Stop? Where? Al Carbon. So you can get your sweet chicken sandwich mm -hmm. and your Poke Balls. Such a delicious chicken sandwich. I'm kind of convinced at some level, though, there's going to be these creepy, like, child predators that are going to use it to lure children. I, I've heard that 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 idea running around because apparently some people have used. There is an item you can use, it's called a lure, and you can. Put it out and it attracts all Pokemon. The idea is like people would see, oh, there's someone put a lure out and they're going to, everyone kind of congregates that. Apparently, I guess some people did that and tried to mug people and take their phones. Wow. Uh, I, I was thinking like windowless vans with the doors open, you know, and some creepy dude in there being like, yeah, I got your Pokemon right here. <laughs> I got the one-eyed Squirtle for you to uh, catch, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Probably more like a one-eyed Blastoise <laughs> or one cannon Blastoise. <laughs> one and done, baby. So let's uh, let's end this on a positive note, not so creepy. Um, so you think it was good for the series? I think it was, and it's definitely done a lot of good for Nintendo. There at this point, their their stock shares went up like twenty five percent. And I think when I also saw they were like they were very close to beating out Twitter on Android for being the most concurrently used app by users. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That is really impressive. Um, I mean, so. I always want to see Nintendo succeed because mm -hmm. I, and I think they're still the kind. I don't think Nintendo's the kind of company to chase profits. I don't think they're going to go like the the Konami route, like oh no, mobile games now, or pachinko machines or whatever. But I definitely think they're the kind of company that should hopefully have the business sense and knowledge to go. We can make something like this, still make it fun and engaging, and bring in tons of dollars, and still do our crazy, fun, innovative things that we try to push the medium forward with, using those funds. It makes more of a windfall for them to do the crazy things they want to do. I got their next money-making idea. What's that? Augmented reality Zelda on your phone. I would never show up to work again. <laughs> and kind of on a more somber note to leave this episode, we do want to hear your thoughts and please send your uh, questions into gamegragers.com slash discuss as per normal. Uh, but when we're recording this and speaking of Pokemon, it is in fact the one-year anniversary of uh, Satori Wada's passing and I think as gamers and as Nintendo fans it's still it still stings yeah it's so been a fast year though yeah but thank you Mr. Iwata and we appreciate everything you've done for games and gamers and just generally being an awesome dude thank you <laughs>